Hello, hello, welcome. It's Jim Jenny here. We are recording. We're going to get straight into it. Going to be showing you another game today that I have ported over from the physical world into the virtual world. This is called the Shapes Game. You might be familiar with this, and it's been around for a little while. And you, you'll see what the gist of this game is as I walk through it. I don't want to just theoretically explain it. You'll see it for yourself. I'm not aware of anybody else doing it virtually. This is just, um, you know, needs must. Crisis is the mother of innovation, and it seems to be landing okay in some of my Scrum and Agile classes. Cool. What is the Shapes game? What are we trying to build? We're trying to build this thing here. This is just some sort of, you know, um, ambiguous, funky, strange, abstract shape that I threw together. And it's made up of one, two, three, four, five elements, okay? Two triangles, two rectangles, and a yellow dot. Now, you could um, put together any kind of object, depending on how creative you're feeling. You've got to think about the tool in mind, and I'm using Neural. And the aim is to have teams build as many of these objects as possible, not parts to the object not components or elements whatever you want to call it but complete parts i'm sure you can see where i'm going with this now the way that you set up teams is you create the teams according to the parts so you say left rectangle a square right square you know blue triangle pink triangle with yellow dot and then you have an integration team so what we're modeling here are component teams that are contributing to building one product or one thing this is akin to having um, a group of different teams building a Victoria sponge cake. I talk about cakes a lot. I don't know why. Maybe I don't eat enough and it's showing up. So the bottom sponge, the cream, the jam, the top sponge, and then a team that put it all together. Is that the most effective way to, you know, deliver a Victoria sponge? I'm sure you'll see from the game it might not be. The third step is to explain that you will get one point for a fully complete picture for a whole, you know, um, shape which we've defined as all of the elements as one so we're not going to give you points for the triangles or the dots or the rectangles or squares it's got to be this thing here a small point this is the the size of the uh, the product or the thing we want delivered the picture to scale so it's all going to be this big so when I'm the product owner at the end of the game or the sprint I assess it and if it's not exactly the same as that then they're not hitting the mark they're not going to get the point you will lose a point for every piece that does not fit. So as you can see here, this is a pretty bad one I made. This is way off compared to that. Uh, the dot is not on the pink triangle. And all of the parts you don't lose, you don't use, you will also lose a point. So in this case, you've got that wrong. You've got that wrong. That's two points. And that's three, four, five. So that's five points deducted there. Not a good start, but it's set up that way for people to experience the pain. Now, if you were to see how you play it, I'll explain these little mini rule parts there in a second. You lay out teams up to around, you know, could be up to three to seven, that sort of thing. Set up the teams according to the parts and they generate their part and they pass it on. And as they pass it on, it goes to integration and they have to put it all together. And often in the first round, it's one big mess. This is a small little bit of, it's like, you know, a minuscule but important point because this has to carry over into the virtual world. When the teams are making their parts, what they could do, right, is just copy and paste. Now that's fine, but as you can see, the you know out of the box square that I've made is not the same size as the size that's wanted. And that's on, that's on purpose, because then what that does is, it makes it a little bit more fiddly for the first one. And eventually, yes, they can copy and paste it. If you wanna be, pretty harsh you can tell them they've got to make it from scratch and you can you know get a scrum master to help them stay honest um, if people are being cheeky so once the left square team make their part they pass it onto the right square team and it gets passed on and so on and the integration team will have the tricky part of trying to make everything fit and very often what happens is nothing fits it gets very messy and they've got lots of parts moving around but no complete product or one complete shape each scrum event is one minute the exception to that is the sprint, that's three minutes. So for example, your sprint planning meeting is one minute. You can have estimations if you want, it's not essential because the only things we're measuring are the sprint, how much waste is left over, in other words, how many pieces um, were created and not used, and how many piece, and how many, sorry, um, fully complete pictures or, um, I don't know if we use the word objects, products were used, that's what we're counting. Um, I've just said here you have to create your part manually, 
So it's not good enough to copy and paste. So I've been a bit harsh, but you can get them to copy and paste if they really want, if you want to ease them into it and make it difficult as you go. And then you can identify a project manager. So across all the teams say, could you nominate one person? And what they try and do is have the tricky job of coordinating things and they'll find out that that doesn't scale as well as they want. So what we're looking for here is to try and show how component teams, passing the parcel and integrating, it really does bring up the seven types of wastes. If you want to dovetail into that subject, you can Google that, check that out, message me if you want to know more. That's another vlog in itself, we won't have time. But they get to reorganize on the second sprint in any way they want. And eventually what you want them to see is through inspecting and adapting, when teams are cross-functional, when we have a person from the left square team, right square team, one person from the blue triangle team, one person from the pink, and a team integrating as they go, we're gonna get more products complete as opposed to passing the parcel and getting a team to integrate, you know, a la waterfall, so on. Okay, I hope that was useful. I will be able to share this mural um, because I did not carry on with Miro for different reasons. The performance of the product um, has been a bit disappointing when I've used it live while I train, but some good things to consider. So I'm still toying around. Let me know in the comments if that's handy. I'm signing off. Thank you for watching. Peace.